In this video, we're going to explore how we can add up an image nicely in the canvas, but also position it into a corner, give it a bit of a fading effect. So it is like a small watermark that many might see on an image. And this is quite interesting because with this, you can even we're going to explore how we can reposition it in any corner here and, or anywhere you want to brand your images or your chart. So let's explore how to do this right now. In this video, we will answer one of the viewers question, which is how to add an image logo on the top right corner in Chart.js. All right. So first of all, this question came from one of my other videos, which was about how to add an image on top of the bars in Chart.js, which I highly recommend you to, to check it out. It's absolutely interesting. However, in here, Shubhangi Ingo, and a special thank you to Shubhangi for asking this question says the following hello how to add an image logo on the top right corner of the chart is it possible in chart js thank you in advance all right it is possible let me show you exactly how we're going to do first of all what we're going to do is we're going to start with the default code make sure you go to chartjs 3com getting started and in here if we scroll down we get all of this code here the chunk of code here and if you want to understand what this code does please check out this video here all right so then we're going to paste this in here once we paste this I'm going to move this title in here and just move that save this refresh and now we have our item all right so what we're going to do is we're going to put in here basically an image logo and I guess the image logo could be anything you want and I'm going to just grab make it or I will make it very easy. I'll just grab the chart.js logo. So first of all, to do this, we're going to create a plugin. So in here, in the options, we're going to put in a comma. And then once we did this, what we're going to do next is basically give this plugin a name. So we say your plugins and then here brackets. Now let's, let's give it the name. Uh, uh, what would be a nice name? I guess logo corner or something like that logo image I'll just give it a logo image I have no idea what's the proper name or what would be a nice name to give it but that there should be more than enough so once we have this here I'm going to start with our logo image plugin block and in here the first thing we type in is of course the constant equals or constant logo image equals and then in here we will say ID column string or quotation to make it a string and then you put in again the plugin name once you did that comma all right very important here this 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 or these two here and this one make it consistent very important the so next what we're going to do now uh, or what we could do as well here just above i would say here we can just add up the logo to do this i'll give it a constant and i'll just say logo but you can give it anything you want more descriptive it's probably better and then we say here new image so basically in chart.js or in javascript we're just saying we're going to create a new image and this image will be the source name logo source equal and then here we're going to put in our image source on well, this case i'll just get from chart.js so i'm just going to click on this icon here right click and then copy image address very straightforward nothing fancy put it in here and if i save this now Nothing happens, of course, but everything works fine here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start to implement this into our plugin here. So now will be the next part is where do we draw the image? So we want to draw the image at the very back of the chart because it's basically like a watermark to brand your, your chart, I guess. That would be probably the most logical item. So what we're going to do here is we say here before draw, so it will not overlap anything at all. Say before draw, and then we're going to get the certain values, which is chart, comma, arcs for arguments, and finally the options. These are very useful, and I tend to use them as a standard, but of course you can change these. But if you really want to understand what they are, if you would do the console log, you can find exactly what they are. So in this case, I'll just ignore that. So the next thing what I want to do here is basically uh, creating a constant, and this constant will create a new variable or new constant that will be a breakdown of certain items that we need. And what I need here basically is the chart area positioning. We need to figure out where can we position our chart 
or basically the image. So we're going to say here, well, the one that we really need is the CTX, comma, and then we have the chart area, and I realize that probably if we have a chart area, it's the lines here around. But I realize we probably don't want to put it in here, but here out. Just for the sake of it, we're going to use chart area here just as an as a backup in case we might want to use it. And I will show you in some demo so you have an understanding of what it does. With uh, sorry, we don't do the width, we're going to do here the top, comma, bottom, and then we have left and right. So what does this really do? So let me explain it quickly. So if you open up our developer tab here and I, we click on the inspector, you can see here this is the canvas. The canvas starts here at the corner corner or corner top uh, left. And imagine what you want to do now is, well, you, if you have here the chart area, we are basically going a little bit down in here. So it will not be in zero, zero, but the coordinates will be somewhere. Now, well, let's say here, if we have to move the X value, it's probably 10 pixels, and then maybe go down 20 pixels. So that will be the case here. And this is here, let me remove this. This line here is what we call the left line or the left chart area. This here is the right chart area and of course top and bottom. Basically the square inside the canvas is called the chart area, this specific one here. So in our case we would want to move it from here probably to the right side here. Alright, so let's start to explore now how we're going to do this. We're not done here, we need to put in here an equal and you say chart. And then what we want to do is the following. I'm going to show you the values so you have an understanding of this. So first of all, we're going to say here console.log, and the most important one will be ctx. Save this, refresh, and then we're going to get a lot of data here. So what we're going to do is, and I'm going to show you the difference between the ctx and top, bottom, left, etc., etc. Well, in this case, we should only have the left and the right, so you will have understanding of it. So I'm going to put in these two more, and let's say here left, here right, and save that. If I save it and refresh, you will see here now what is happening. We get a certain value here, and then we have the left is 27 pixels, and the right is 700 pixels. So is that correct? Well, in this case, it is correct, meaning the left would start on this line, which is starting point is 27 pixels going from the left to the right side here to this specific line. So there's some space here, to be exact, 27 pixels. On the right side, in this case, it is exactly matching with the end, which would be 700 pixels, all right? So this is the most important, but we don't want only this. We want to go as well. We can even do the top and bottom. Then you will see the others. But if you want to be in the top here, we have to be here probably at somewhere at position zero, just in the corner here. And then we have to go here. How much we have to go here will depend on the size of our image. But what I want to do is I don't want to hard code 700 or because basically we're going to grab this one here. You can see here all of these numbers. Then if we search here for the canvas, going down here and search for a specific value, you can see your client height, client width. All right. I don't care about that. I want to have only this one here, the offset width and the offset height, which is also 350 or 700 in width by 350 in height. If you look at the image or the canvas with the inspector, see the tooltip at the very top, you can see here 700 by 350 pixels, exactly matching what we need. So we're going to grab this value here, the offset height and the offset width, but to get this, we need this here. Let's search here. We have to go to canvas. So let's go back here. We say ctx.canvas offset height and we can grab this one as well well let's put in the width here up so if we save this now and refresh we will have now the same values but you can see here we have this all right so now we're getting very close to what we need so because now we can start to do the positioning so let's start to work with our image here i'm going to remove these because we don't want to put it in the chart area but if you want to i'll show you later on as well so what we're going to do now it's basically the following. We're going to create uh, the following. We're going to save these variables we have. So we say ctx.save. We need to have this. And next what we're going to do here 
is basically create an if statement. All right. So we're going to if statement that if the logo has been loaded or the image has been loaded, you want to activate. If it's not been loaded, it should be done on load. All right. So that's what we're going to do here. So we say here if logo dot complete. So complete loaded. In that case, what we want to do now is ctx dot draw image. And we're going to draw the image, and basically what will be in here are five values. First one here is the image or the logo. That's the logo, that's the image name, that's basically this one here. The next one would be position x. Position x, which we're going to use based on our offset and other. That I'm going to put in here just 10 pixels for now. And the other one will be position y, and then we have another one will be the width of the image, width image, and height image. All right, so far and forth. So you might be familiar with, with JavaScript. You can do here 10 by 10 pixels. This doesn't work in Canvas. Canvas overrules it. Why? I can't explain yet. But I might uh, suspect that this is probably not the necessary part because we're going to draw the image, which is here. And if you put in here and you will draw the image, it will grab the image default settings or height and width. So that's why don't don't put in here the height and width in pixels, do it in here. So let's assume here we're going to make here 30 pixels by 30 pixels. And we're going to position it 10 by 10. If I save this now, semicolon here, we're not yet done, I realize. We have this, if that, but if we save it now, we probably will see something. All right, so we see something here. But what I want to do here is I want to make sure we have the logo else if the logo is not yet loaded we want to give it some time and do it once it's loaded very important sometimes an image takes some time to load we say here on load and equal and we make here just quickly chart dot draw it's very straightforward here this is just basically what we're repeating here above but uh here it just draws it the moment it's it's fully loaded and then what I want to do, the final one, because I want to do later on some adjustments, I want to restore or reset everything, whatever we have here. Because here, we're saving these variables, but these variables can be used, because what are we doing here? We're drawing before. That's the before draw, meaning that we will draw first the image, and then we draw the canvas items here. But if you have something saved in here, it will be used also in anything else here. So I want to make sure we don't, copy anything from here so we say ctx.restore so we delete anything we saved in here save this refresh so it works fine all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to start to position it to the very right side well i assume here in this case the y value will be zero if i refresh this you can see it goes at the very top it starts nicely so then here you might say well it's just 700 then because the item 700 well this is not the case because if i refresh now 700 means at the very end and then it starts to draw here somewhere and that's not what we want what we need to do basically is 700 minus the 30 pixel of width so we're going to put it in here and i'm going to soft code that so don't worry but i just want to show you this so you have to understand so now we have this here nicely in the corner all right so what we're going to do now is basically soft code these values to do this we create a new constant and we can say here I do not know what will be the exact width and height of your item, so you can code that in here right now. So basically, so this would be the following. We say here constant logo equals, and here we are going to put in, oh sorry, not constant logo, sorry. This will be a logo, I guess logo width, and we say here 30 pixels. And then what I will do is, for the height, we do the same thing. So if I do this now, I can copy this, put it in there. Put that one in there so we have the height and the width and then finally here we could do 700 minus the width so if let's do this and refresh you can see here now we have this nicely done the same would be if we would have the height we have 350 in height and then we're going to do this minus that save that and then we push it here in the corner all right so we have this so let's go and grab here remember we have these values here and this is the reason why we grab these values we just put them in here, the width here is 700 pixels, all right, and then we get this one here is the height, which is 350 pixels, save that, 
and refresh and now we have them so let's put them in every position where you can imagine so let's push them in the other corner here imagine you want to do that how do we do this well in this case if you want to do that all we have to do here is on the y value which is this one here put it on zero so if i do this save that refresh oh sorry that is not what i wanted that's the y is of course for the vertical level so we need to go to the x value that's this one here you can just put this i'll just cut it out and put in zero save that there we are so we go maximum down and if you want to go up of course here it's basically zero zero in here in your case you're looking to put it on the right side and then here zero there we are so if maybe in your case or maybe in the future case you don't want to put it in this part but you would like to put it somewhere in here or in the chart area you can do that as well by using the chart area values here so we can play around with these as well well let's see what happens if you use uh, this one here for example the top on the y position you can see here we're moving a little bit down and then of course this one you could go here and you could put it here on the left let's grab that left Put on here then you put it just in here all right so those are some of the options and you can imagine you can do that same with top bottom left right etc etc um all right so final thing what i want to show you here because we have this here but maybe you want to give this a bit of a fading color all right to do this what we need to do is the following we're going to put in here and this is very important make sure it's after the save because it will save the day details but also it needs to be restored so we're going to do here the following and we just say here for the image we're going to create a uh, alpha value to make it more uh, transparent so we say here ctx and all we want to do here is basically the following so you see global alpha equals 0 0.5 save that refresh and there you are you can see now it has a slight of a watermark texture or effect where we have the image slightly faded and this is basically everything you need to know with your image in chart.js so if you have any other questions you can always put them in the comment section below next if you're also interested in maybe a bit more advanced items in chart.js we're going to colors and lines i would highly recommend you to check out this one to assign colors in a line chart based on the values if it's going up or down it will give a different color this is one of my uh i guess my favorites highly recommend it you will see a link popping up somewhere here on the screen right now